Welcome back to Occultus Anonymous. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as always, we are sponsored by Roll20, uh, and uh, as well as uh, those of... Wow. My whole brain just fell apart I'm trying to get that sentence out. Hi. It's Friday. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we also are sponsored by those of you from our community who choose to give us money on Patreon uh, to help us fund things like art and uh, equipment upgrades and stuff like that. Um, so a special shout out to a wild doc has appeared from the tall grass, Adele, Al, Alan, <laughs> or sorry, Alan, Michael, uh, Alexander, Bernie, Blood Angel, Brandon, Chris, Daniel, Delore, Emil, Sunzu Surali, George, Jack, Jenny, Josh, Camo, Cat Feathers, Crazy Man, Michael, Milo, Moku, Neo, Noba, uh, Other Michael, Harry, Pun Negirl, Puppeteer, uh, Ramon, Ryan, Shishara, Sinna, Smooth Criminal, Taryn, The Arcane, Thomas, Thomas, Toast, Vortex, Woodfoot, and Zoltan. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Um, welcome back. We are Sans Ash, so we are Sans Cricket tonight uh, as we go in, back into the world of uh, Doskval. Um, Doskval. And uh, remember last time, everyone went to a fancy masquerade ball. Stole a, a bunch of shit. Oh, yeah. Stole a bunch of art. Got a fancy yes. demon sword. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Give me that. There's mixed opinions on the fancy demon sword. <laughs> <laughs> we did, Worth in fact, get it. <laughs> Whether or not it was a bonus or not. Uh, I mean, you did steal it. I didn't say it was a good thing. It weird. got stole. It got stole. It then got uh, thieved. And uh, set up basically the, the final push. Uh, to make this noble house sort of collapse around uh, Lord Mary Hall, mm -hmm. the sort of abusive piece of shit, drunken noble. Yeah. Um, he did some bad things. So. Oh. Uh, we already did some downtime and stuff, but is there uh, anything else that y'all want to do? Hmm. So Tara and I definitely need to have a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sounds good. Sure. I just um, want to throw this out to the rest of the crew. Should I be taking the sword with me when I go talk to Satara? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. as, as, as an elder sibling myself, I mean, why, why, why even like broach the potential like sibling rivalry thing? Like, in between demons, <laughs> new. No. Hey, hey, hey! I got your brother in this sword right here. <laughs> I need some information about it. Yeah, okay. So I'll leave it. Uh, <laughs> <and safe. laughs> You're going to keep it away from the crafty man? I, I think specifically right with the specific instructions for Hook to you know keep it safe. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know what would happen if you didn't. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> crafty man would be sitting around and be like, Try to sort out a little get, bit again. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I swing that around. It felt good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It felt okay, you know, right? I'm not having any attachment to it, but it might as well, you know. And then I come back and it's all blood soaked everywhere. Well, it's felt so good <laughs> sticking it into someone. I just kept on doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just like potato chips. <laughs> look, look, look. I know this looks bad, but. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But look at this. There's no blood on the sword. It just drinks it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's not traumatic at all. No. I'm not going to wipe it down at all. Isn't that great? Yeah. The sword will never rust. It's it's just enough blood that you can fling the sword to the side and it right. cleans Ooh. itself off on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. For style, it's like a Teflon you know? blade. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Oh, me. All right, so um, where does Corby, or where has Corby in the past met with, uh, I just lost the name. Satara? Satara. Yeah, um, that's the name. A few different places. They've uh, gone for dinner or tea on occasion, but we've also met like in the warren that her cult occupies, um, away from prying eyes. That seems smart. 
uh, depending on the nature of the business we want to discuss and how safe I feel talking to him. Okay. I so, mean, she's an ally, she's a friend, but she's still a demon, so. Right. So how safe and how uh, secluded are you today? You I set think, the scene. I, I think I want to um, meet her in a public place. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, like a, a coffee house in the more like, yeah. traditional old school English sense. Yes. Yeah, and there'll be so so, so she's not going to you know throw balls of fire or something without raising her right because right? it's in her best interest as well to keep a low profile. Um. So all demons have a um a type, an aspect. And a desire. The three things. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, do I have this chart added into the game? I don't. It's in the sheets. Um, that you sent us. Yeah, I thought I uploaded this chart into the um, okay. the roll twenty game. Uh, Craig, yeah. do you want to roll me two d sixes? Sure. Five. Okay. Um, so Satara's affinity is fire and smoke. Mm. Called um, it. and her her aspect is monstrous. Ooh. Okay. Um, and then can you roll me two more d6s? Uh, her desire is pleasure. That that meshes well. Okay, it all tracks pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So she. So so they, just to, to expand the back, is it reasonable that like they may have had a friends with benefits relationship, or is that way too dangerous? Uh, I mean that's probably fine. Okay. <laughs> I mean, everyone's got everyone's got needs, right? Right. Uh, especially pleasure demons. Mm-hmm. And you know, being a pleasure um, demon, I I presume they would be pretty good at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I did see. This is completely out of context. I did see a like Tumblr post the other day of someone saying that we need to stop using succubus and incubus and start saying concubus. <laughs> gender neutral term or gender neutral <laughs> verb. <laughs> I was like, all right. Like the, the Latin verbs like concubar or something like that. Um I was like, all right, that's cool. I'm cool with that. Um all right. So I uh I'm picturing them as um well dressed but in a very alluring, loose-fitting um, mm. kind of uh, attire. Perhaps a, a touch tighter than it needs to be in certain areas and a touch right. looser than it needs right. to be right. in others. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely know what they're doing. Mm. Um, and when, like, if you if you catch them out of, like, the corner of your eye, especially with your sort of kind of latent witchy powers, um there's this sort of um twisted kind of um look to their face as you swear that you know a horn is there for a second and um their skin is like a little bit like burned and ashy looking mm-hmm. but if you're if you're looking at them if you're having a conversation with them you don't you don't notice these things right. you have that sort of concealment through their powers and stuff like that um and and just for the viewers at home, when I meet with Satara, I'm not actually meeting with Satara. I'm meeting with whatever body she has possessed, subsumed, subsumed. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, as far as I, Craig and I talked about this a little bit mm-hmm. off screen, but uh, to tell everybody at home, uh, as far as I understand how demons work, based on the the way that the setting is written up, is that they are only able to reach in. 
to this world a little bit here and there. So like you get artifacts where they've, you know, put a little sliver of their uh entity um into it where so they can then like reach through with their uh, consciousness and contact people or make their wishes known um and then if someone usually um from a cult of theirs like advances their agenda enough or uh, something like that then there's possibility that sort of the uh to use a mage term they get the open condition mm -hmm. mm, yeah um and so there's this very real sort of threat at all times with people that get involved with the demon cults that like yeah i'm gonna get what i want because demons love helping people get their their wishes and their desires especially if it aligns with the demons as well um but it can always backfire deals with the devil and whatnot yeah um so uh and it's very like aggressively sultry voice right Ooh. just like corby like darling. veronica rabbit <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, wait, Jessica, Jessica Rabbit? No, Jessica Rabbit. Sorry, yeah, Jessica Rabbit. Is, is <laughs> like, wait, Rabbit on? Her, so her long ago, sorry. <laughs> she, 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 yeah. She's the brunette sister. Jessica there you Rabbit. go. Um, I'm not. Or me. Sorry, I'm just drawn that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi. It's uh, good to see you. It's been Always a while. A pleasure to see you as well. <laughs> Your choice of words is wonderful as always. <clears throat> I know my friends and I like to keep them happy. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, in a recent job, heist, activity. Uh, a score, darling. Yes. Uh, in a recent score, uh, an object fell into our hands that uh, seems to be tangentially associated with you in a familiar familial sort of way. Oh? There was an artifact that we recovered from a safe that claims to be our guys. Oh! I found a little sliver of my brother. That's exciting. And um, um, yeah, it's exciting and potentially dangerous. This uh, sliver oh, of no more guys, dangerous than meeting here with me today. Possibly, this particular sliver of our guys has manifested inside a sword that really wants to be wielded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we we come from the same family, but uh, well, he's always been devoted to different things, desiring different things. Um, that's what I was hoping to talk to you about a little bit. Um, what his goals and motivations might be. Well, as far as his goals, I can't tell you. I haven't spoken with him in a long time. But, uh,. I'd say his most common motivation would be war. Hmm. So not just simple combat or killing, but on a larger scale. The, the formality, the piles of bodies left to burn after the battle. 
I see. Oh, and war has got to be fucking terrible here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole bunch of angry <laughs> ass ghosts getting up. Oh, and, and yeah, no, they fight each and, other again. Yeah. Yeah. So now that just sort of clicks that this isn't just a sword. This is probably like an officer's cutlass kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Sort of thing a general might wield. Okay. Thankfully, we live in a rather civilized time. There haven't been any large-scale conflicts like that in a while. Indeed, that's but uh, sorts of things are entirely problematic. But promising these things, my brother, might get you everywhere. We were perhaps thinking more short term. This isn't the kind of thing our normal fence would really be able to handle. Mm -hmm. So I thought I might ask you for a piece of advice on that, on how to turn that into more spendable currency. Ah. Without you know, a... leading the world into a global war or anything like that. Well, what I do with it if you sell it to me, that's fine. Uh, there is a bit of irony in liquidating the uh, fiery artifact of my brother. Very well. We will spend some time. If you don't wish to make use of it, make use of his acquaintance, uh, we will find fire. To be clear, this is not my decision alone. I'm merely presenting options to my patrons. Very well. I don't want to lead you astray. And that understands. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, it's not often that I'm the one led astray. And she like looks over and just like runs her finger down someone's arm as they walk by, and smiles at them. Mm-hmm. And they like I kind of like just I mean, can't look away from them. And then like walk full speed into a coat rack or something. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, um, so we're friends, so we'll, you know, continue on with the tea drinking and the socializing mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Yep. Have a, you know, pleasant the business day. having been concluded. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, anybody else have little scenes or anything they want to do? Yeah. The crafty man want to check in on Telda. Mm-hmm. Make sure that there haven't been any further reprisals. You have to beat somebody up. All good. All right, excellent. But hook. Yeah, yeah. When uh, when Corby gets back, like Hook is trying the sword on on the belt. He's like he's not like it's like you, you see he's got like a big tarp esque thing draped over it, but he's just like imagining it's like. And like as Corby walks in, you get like Hook, like in in a new outfit and a new suit and stuff like that. Look, he says, "Is this too much? Do you think like you know, sort of, should I go with a rapier?" <laughs> and Corby has a look of like somebody who's walked in on a child, you know, holding a hand grenade. Oh, says, oh yeah. um, we want to be very careful. <laughs> I, I'm familiar. Do you see it is wrapped up? I have no interest in involving a devil, but I mean, you left a good-looking cutlass here, and I figured I at least should use it as an example piece. It's a nice one. It looks yeah. great on you. <laughs> yep, uh, you can have it back now, Corby. <laughs> like, <laughs> the hands are up, the, the hips are yeah. like to the sides. Like, yep, you can come, you can come get yep. this now. It's talking to me. You can, you can just take that back now. Uh, oh, did you I'll try it on? You, no, no. Says, I'll try it on. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, I may have a buyer for it. 
Um, the the question is, uh, what are they offering? Give us a better sword. She's going to think about it. And okay. Get back to me. Okay. Um, if you want to sell it, uh, I will allow you to sell it for five coin. Ooh. Um. It will be a uh, six-segment clock uh, to be done during downtime. Sure. The sale? Okay. Like, talking with, uh, with Satara and finding a buyer, because she's, she's not buying it. She's offering to mm. more or less fence it for you. Facilitate um, the sale for Facilitate us. the sale, exactly. Right. Great. Um, and... and Let's be clear. A demon artifact sword is worth way more than five coin, but she's mm-hmm. keeping the rest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> she's the one talking to the people who are interested. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I imagine it is well above our pay grade. Right. And like, like I, I'm kind of imagining this as like a bunch of just regular old street gang thugs who broke in and stole some stuff and find oh, out yeah. that they've got the Hope Diamond. Right. Yeah, more or less. Oh, fuck. Yeah. This is yeah, very way much. more heat than we are prepared to deal with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Fencing it for its its full worth would be very troublesome for us. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like no one you know has the funds to pay you what it's worth. Right. Yeah. And or the ability to keep it under it. wraps. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Hook is of the bind to yes. Sell it for that price. Get rid of it. Be done with it because this is this is well above our pay grade, and uh, like, do not want this on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I think what I'll do is I'll start up a clock, mm-hmm. and any of y'all can work on it. Uh, mm. Okay, cool. We can all contribute to mm-hmm. completing that clock. Cool. Yep. With standard um, time rules. That sounds good. Yeah. Now, just project. just so we're all making an informed decision. Yes. It's an artifact of a demon called Argaz, who is a demon of war. All right. Like, not combat or bloody fights or anything, but, like, orchestrated armies, mass, you know, marching and that sort of organization level mm. of stuff. So, oh, just in case we think we would rather keep it, I thought I'd pass that information along. Hmm. This is more reason to get rid of it, Corby. I'm aware, well. but <laughs> like, <this> is, <laughs> I'm certainly not going to make a unilateral decision for the entire crew. So uh, I'm just making sure everybody's informed on what's involved. Yeah. Somebody, somebody Crash. texts Ash. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, I think. The crafty man scratches his head, looks at Corby and says, would be a way to get a nice sword in the bargain. I'm, I'm sure we could work something out. Mm. as part of our negotiations it'd be a fair trade yeah how about it hook i mean i'm I'm fine with that let's get well equipped Mm -hmm. i suspect we could make good use of such items in the future i mean so hook hook isn't much one for you know swinging around a sword but you know he does understand that they are they add polish to a uniform (laughs) image is key yeah. So um, I will say this: uh, mm-hmm. until you have officially sold it, you are still have it in your possession, and anyone is welcome to uh, take a box of their equipment on a job and reveal that they brought it along. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! Sure. You can file that under an unusual weapon. Oh man! Noted. So. Uh, <laughs> That's one load. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nocturne said unilateral decision for the crew, aka pulling a songbird. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. All right. So uh, it is a uh, maybe a week or so, a couple weeks after your previous job, um, party and everything. It'll take a little while to, you know, lower the heat down and get some mm-hmm. projects done and stuff like that. And uh, Hook, you are uh, out and about clothes shopping and doing what you do. And uh, a uh, black cab pulls up next to you as you're walking down the street. Stops. 
like cabby cab or like somebody's mm-hmm. personal okay and uh the driver says oh you're hook right yep and like hook just steps into the cab <laughs> Like, we do not need to have this conversation, whatever it is, shouting on the street. Mm. <laughs> Prudent. And, uh... Okay, they don't have detailed personalities in this. Uh, I thought they did. Name generator. You know what? This guy's name is Wallace. Uh, mm. I got a name generator in my head. Yeah. Um, there we go. So... There is a sort of a big, I would describe him as traditionally English looking gentleman, <laughs> sort of portly bowler hat, uh-huh. kind of ruddy faced a little bit. Um, so like a Watson type character? Probably not that. Yeah. Long. And, well, like, I'm, oh, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm with Craig on like some of the, like the old depictions of Watson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tweed coat and yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, he's kind of sitting in there smoking a pipe. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. As, and to clarify, he's in the passenger seat? In the in the cab. Oh, okay. Like, uh, sorry, cab, is they're like carriages, right? Right. Because like, we don't have cars, so. Right. <laughs> I'm with it. Okay. <laughs> so, so the driver was out outside, and then right. you get in. Yep, I'm with you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Said passenger seat. I'm like, hold on a second. Um, so yeah, it's just like really, it's one of their nicer ones, right? Like plush velvet, like red, red and black design and stuff like that. Hmm. And um, <sighs> hook. Thank you for joining me. Of course. To whom do I owe the pleasure? Uh, by reputation, you'd probably recognize him, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Um, sure. So you're, you're not like on the back foot, right? Um, uh, Wallace, I uh, run this here guild of... Uh, Drivers and people about town, right? Right. But you probably you already knew this. It's we haven't formally been introduced, after all. But yes, uh, nice, nice so to meet, make your acquaintance, Wallace. I yours as well. I know that uh, you and your crew have done a number of uh, favors for us, or at least uh, made our lives easier a few Where times. We can. Um. And I know that we've certainly helped you. Um, so, uh, seeing as all that is true, um, and neither of us disputes it, uh, I was hoping to ask a bit of a favor. Ask away. See, there's a bit of a job that, well, we're certainly not suited to. And truth be told, is personal to me. H- Hook smiles at this and kind of makes a lean back. And oh yes, do tell. You see, my brother is a bit of the uh, fancy pants uh, noble type. I didn't really jive well with it with the family and left and did my own thing. Make your own way, absolutely. Exactly. Well, my dear nephew. There right down. Quentin. Um is uh has been attending the university here in and uh we write back and forth. He's not often possessed of enough free time to get out and go for a ride around the city with his uncle, but I do find time to have my boys drop off things for him and stuff like that. 
Mm-hmm. Well, he wrote me a most troublesome letter a couple weeks ago, saying that things were strange inside the walls of the school. People going missing. Mm. Weird rumors and whispers about the well, some of our less uh, human dwellers of the city. Hook is like already shaking his head at whispers. It's like, no, 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 but go on, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried to. Uh, I tried to write back to him and get more info on this, but he has not responded. It's been how long? Uh, almost three weeks now. Troubling. Uh, my brother has nothing to say on the matter, uh, and the school being awfully tight-lipped. You know how those academics are. Especially if they're covering something up. Right. But... I've got the resources and the covers to get your crew in under the guise of <clears throat> we'll say what I'm looking for uh, noble layabouts oh okay sure sure yeah that's fine Looking to just lose with the academics. Yes, audit. Rub some elbows more than anything else, right? If you get in and find Quentin, make sure he's all right. And don't, uh, maybe don't, uh, let on exactly who you are. Um, I'll, I'll make sure it's well worth you and your cruise time. Having a moment here, you'll have to understand, Wallace, because last time somebody offered me a very easy job, it involved running from the Spirit Wardens. Well, uh, uh, Wallace... Oh, you have to admit... Um, me offering you a job is much more palatable palatable than yeah the big uh, muscle boy <laughs> yeah um hutton is a is, is a wonderful gentleman and i will say nothing to disparage him but yes um i too am often fond of saying <laughs> good things about hutton at random times of my day yeah just a little poke <laughs> looking out the windows <laughs> um but uh no uh I, I, as you have said we are we are good friends um uh for uh the cabbies and a uh, personal favor to you well uh besides being worth its weight in gold um you know keeping the cabbies on our good side is also very very useful. Um, well, you'll I find will... you'll find the boys a bit scrawny to be wanting to be pay paid in the weight in gold, but uh, yeah, it'll be. And the potential for a little bit of blackmail uh, over your brother has some potential as well. So well, I'm... I'm not trying to ruin his life or anything. No. No, I would never want to ruin his life. However, the threat of it, however, is a powerful motivator, but uh -huh. nothing to harm, you know, Quentin or, uh, you know, splash back on you. I'm subtle, after all. Such a spider. <laughs> um, but no, absolutely. More specifically, uh, besides just monetary payment, uh, I think that this might be the beginning of a close friendship between our crews and uh seeing as how and he like flicks up his paper mm -hmm. 
and like it's not the front page but it's pretty close to the front there's like three or four stories that the ink rakes have published <laughs> talking yeah. oh freaky fingers you know kidnap children and <laughs> all this shit's being made up about you that's what i'm talking about they'll let anybody they, take an ad out in that won't they oh well that's actually just their published material yeah that's the point <laughs> like they, we'll they can publish anything they want I but, see. no uh they are a bit of a nuisance well, suggesting we okay I'm suggesting that they might become more of a nuisance in the future if negotiations or sort of relations continue to uh, devolve these things happen they do and uh, seeing as I'm the head of the other better rumor mill in town a vested interest in seeing them eat a slice of extremely humble eel pie. That alone is worth checking in on <laughs> your wonderful nephew, Quentin, who I've heard such glowing reviews about. Reviews? That's probably, the, probably not the right... <laughs> the ink rake's talking about Quentin? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, uh, we can definitely look into this for you, and if you've gone to all the trouble to give us cover identities, well, now it would be just very rude to say no at this point, now wouldn't it? And uh, he takes a big puff of his pipe and sticks his hand out. And it's like, all right, well, I am glad we had this chat. I thought it might go just as well as it has. Uh, I'll have my boys swing over all the papers and whatnot. It's been a while since I've been into school. Hook has never been in school <laughs> um, and lets himself out of the cab um, and, you know, continues his, you know, jaunty walk uh, mm -hmm. being seen just to be seen. And then, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. makes his way back. <laughs> so um, we have a job of a sort. <laughs> yeah. What kind of score? I don't know that it's going to pay very well. It will pay. It's not great, uh, but we're going Why to do a favor it? for the cabbies. Oh, mm -hmm. listen, the cabbies have had our back more times than I can count. I well, and we've had theirs, mm -hmm. but yeah, apparently Wallace, his good nephew, Quentin, his, and potentially the entire university, I'm not quite clear on how deep this goes, has come into a spot of bother uh, down at... Mm -hmm. The university and um well wallace said he knew that the crew could handle this kind of thing but uh it sounds very much mm. up your alley corby <laughs> big sad face on hooks like i don't wanna but okay uh oh, that sounds terrible yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean that ghosts and things? what sort of trouble could he possibly get into at a university well, Corby, I don't uh, smash cut to Corby like shoving a bag full of arcane bullshit. <laughs> yeah. All right, so when do we go? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't think um, uh, I don't think it's Quentin getting into so much trouble so much as something is happening at the university and Quentin has gotten into that. Oh, yeah, I it see. might be large or widespread. If there have been. A ongoing problems and then there was a concerning message and three weeks of silence so i'm not quite sure what we're walking into uh but we will have um uh, you know cover identities uh which uh, by the way does mean corby that we need to talk about your um expressions when people talk about devils being up to something what what's you need a little bit more concern Oh, right, because normal people don't get excited about that. <laughs> Nobody gets excited about that, Corby. 
Okay. Jeez. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> and like in the meantime, like while we're waiting for the cabbies to bring stuff, Hook is over here grilling and and <laughs> and, and doing some practice with with Corby of like ghost. No, you frown. <laughs> Ah, (laughs) (laughs) that was that was a good one. Totally in the Willy Wonka. Oh no, there's a ghost moose. (laughs) That's good. That's real good. You you could just wait and and ape whatever you see. The rest of us, right? Okay. Um, Yeah, you just wait, and then the rest of us go ah, ah, and then it goes ah, ah, and then you go ah, ah, ah. Okay, that's a plan. I can do that. Cool. <laughs> I got a All question right. for you, Hook. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, let me get this straight. Wallace's nephew hasn't sent any further communications after the one he sent three weeks ago. Correct. And there's some thought that there are devils loose in the premises. Correct. And we have cover identities to help us get in. Correct. But if there are devils loose in the premises, you think the cover identities are really going to protect us? Protect us? No, but it will get us in. Hmm. It'll protect us from the norms. All right. Yeah, because if and and this is more out of character. If I remember correctly, the university itself is kind of like a walled off campus kind of thing. Yeah. Very like ivory tower closed compound. All right. I'm inclined to sneak around. Fox, I will take that as a compliment. Hook does feel like <laughs> Drew, but rich pirate. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nice. Um, all right. So um, one of the cabbies shows up with disguises and papers and uh, sort of a loose contract of how much. A blues uh, contract? Nobody said we were playing music. Loose? I know. I'm just teasing. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe you didn't actually didn't hear me right. Oh, yeah. Um <laughs> sort of a loose contract promise slash IOU sort of thing uh, mm. that uh, to the tune of six coin. Ooh, yeah. Hook is staring daggers at this contract and going, I feel like we are not being fed the whole truth about this, but okay. This is going to be dangerous. Yeah. The man cares about his family. I'm hoping that's why it's so high, but yes. This is hazard pay. Didn't that is <laughs> that this is, is just thought. and this is Craig asking, didn't he talk about five coin in the cab? Mm-mm. Okay. No, no, that was five coin was his sword. Five coin is the sword. Okay, right, right. Okay. Sorry. Which Hook is now looking at looking over to Corby. Corby. How well is that? sword going to be capable of hacking into a ghost or some other spooky thing? Ghosts I would worry about too much, but hacking into a person who's been possessed, for example, would be very good at it. The I think the, it would be exceptional at that sort of thing. The difficulty that you will encounter will be to stop doing that once you finish with that target is probably the way that would go. There there will I, I would expect that there would definitely be some issues of momentum. <laughs> all right. Well then just to set precedent, I think we all need to spar to make sure who gets to use it first. <laughs> <laughs> <I fall. laughs> Hook looks across the room and points and says, No. Who can resist the de- uh, the devil within uh, is probably going to be our bigger concern, Crafty. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's the sign. Yeah. yeah. Someone, tells the guy solid. <laughs> Someone tells me the guy with zero dots and resolve might have trouble with that. Exactly. Right. <laughs> like, as, as Hence why it, I'm playing it this way. Right. Mm-hmm. Hook, hook, hook belts it on, and like there's a definite like care and like mm-hmm. trying to like touch only the belt and not oh, the yeah. sword, and kind mm-hmm. of looks at Crafty Man and says, if shit does hit the fan, though, mm-hmm. I am tossing it to you. <laughs> Good. All right. I'm ready. Watch. Let's practice right now. No. Nope. And, and Crash Man gets down. <laughs> ready, well, ready, and ready, just kind of slaps out a hand. It's like, nope. Aww, you're no fun. 
No, cool. No, I am not. Um, I am alive. <laughs> <laughs> Scores are supposed to be fun. So, and, like, Crafty the, Man walks away. <laughs> the sort of gather information phase of this sure. can mm-hmm. be things before you go in. Oh, yeah. Um, right. Or it can be some things on campus as well. Mm. Like, you'll, we'll, we'll kind of time skip a bit but okay. it takes you a few days to get like settled in and meet some people and do some investigations and stuff like that um so tell okay. me what you're trying to find out when in that sequence it is and and what you and how you go about that i have some ideas but i'll wait for others can i um use ghosts as spies if you find one <laughs> or make one Throwing that out there, but um, you don't make a ghost unless you kill somebody, Craig. But crafty, crafty man well, leans yeah. in and says, "You want me to use a sword? I heard <laughs> yeah. you want me to use a sword." <laughs> Such a bad idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're the one who was suggesting summoning ghostly dresses. All right, both of yeah. you are in the corner right now. It would have made it would have made a great distraction. I can help you get a ghost. Um. Okay, so there's a like a mystical underworld that mm. that Corby is plugged into. Mm-hmm. So I want to pump that for information, rumors. Uh, demons have desires and wants and focuses and stuff like that, and that's gonna if a demon is working at school, that's gonna give some hints about what they are and what they want and who. Right, because I'm thinking that would have ripples outside of the walls of the school. Sure. Yeah. So strange requests and stuff showing up and that kind of thing. Mm. So I okay. think Corby's gonna pump the mystical underworld for that. Okay. Um You're talking about like going and talking to different people that are connected to it? Yeah. Okay. Um Yeah. Um so uh, probably a sway. Um, if you're including Satara at any point in this, Mm -hmm. uh, you can add a plus one. Okay. I don't think of that. Can I push myself as well? Hmm? Can I push myself Uh, as well as get the Satara? Generally not. Okay. Pushing yourself is usually only a sure one or the other. And yeah, so, I guess this would be a consort. Unless I'm... Way. it's not really persuading someone. Yeah, because consort uh, specifically calls out talking with folks to get access to resources or yeah. information. Yeah. All right. Uh, risky control. Desperate. It... For gather, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. I was much happier with Sway. Oh well. Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, bud. Because <laughs> I have I have a dot in Sway. I don't have anything yeah. in Consort. Uh, yeah. You don't have anything in Consort? I thought that was a but default didn't you one take for a... Whisper. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Did, didn't you um in, include Sitara in this and get the plus yeah. one? That's, that's where the one die came yeah, from. That's where the one oh, came from. Oh, that's right. Instead of two die, take the lowest. That's right. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, so there's not a lot of info out there, I'm guessing. Okay, so what question were you trying to ask? Um, I want to get a feel for if there's demonic influences happening at the university, what their focus or desire or goal might be. Okay, so like what is arcane or weird here? Yes. Okay. Because of that gather information box at the mm-hmm. bottom of your character sheet. Um, cool. Um, you get and Satara, uh, kind of helps reveal this as well. Um, you get suspiciously nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like you're, you, you, you're asking about and everything. It, it's not even just that people aren't willing to share things with you. Like, everyone's given you every, every bit of information they have. Um, but there's nothing to be had. 
Hmm. Okay. So there is, I, Chris. I I I will tell you that there is most likely something covering up what is going on. Hmm. Right, which is useful info on its own. Okay. Somebody else? I'm going back and forth here. Um, I, I, I think I'll just stick with this one. Um, yeah, I have a question. How can I discover X? Uh, mm -hmm. Wherein X is uh, the the center point, the 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 uh, you know what everything is, the linchpin. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Deviant, um, okay. for uh, for this situation, for, for what's happening here. Okay. And how are you going about this? I mean, probably consorting so, and just okay. talking with people and just being the, the normal chatty uh, person mm -hmm. I am. So this is kind of taking place after you get into the building? Right, yes. And stuff on mm -hmm. campus, yeah. Cool. Five one. A five. Okay. Um, it takes a few days and a few different uh, sit downs with, you know, a bottle of wine or something like that with some people and just really playing up this sort of casual, like, yes, yes, we're all here to study. Well, I mean, um, Hook is hip, Hook is old enough that, you know. Right. Um. And uh, I think any t like everyone's, you know, Hook is a very likable, forceful personality, right? And so people are, are really willing to, you know, sit down and chat and have dinner or whatever and talk about various things they've been, you know, learning and stuff. And um, the... Uh, when you get more towards the subject of people going missing or um, stuff like that, or if there's anything weird or, uh, and, and you can kind of flavor how, how Hook would exactly broach these subjects. Um, you get this kind of little bit of like, oh yeah, um, I mean, I, wouldn't want to go about saying things like these um or uh some you know just like hushed little hey you might want to be a little bit more subtle about that friend um people that cause trouble have been well i, I and then, <laughs> like that conversation is very much like, um, but putting putting multiple of these together, um, you get that there must be some sort of authority figure um, tied into whatever is going on. Sure. So somebody is deciding somebody is a problem, and they go missing. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Crash man. All right. So, uh, when something shady is going on, Crafty Man always suspects that somebody's doing something at night. Okay. Always. This right? is fair. Like, this is fair. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what is happening, how, even if somebody is actually doing something shady during the day, somebody's doing something inappropriate at night. And so, he's inclined to investigate that kind of thing. So, there are three main things he wants to do. Um, one, or all of them can be done while he's there. One of them could be done before they get there. It's entirely up to you, Chris, how you want to work it into the narrative. So the first thing is he wants to patrol around the grounds of the university to watch people exiting, entering and exiting, see if there's any control, if there's a limited number of people coming in and out, and especially if certain people are coming in and out at night. The second thing he wants to do is he wants to 
follow people around at the university who might have access to secret spaces, you know, like headmasters and things like that. People in charge that have keys and he's going to steal some of those keys so he can look in these places. So if like a headmaster has access to specific rooms and he sees that certain people are being disciplined, he's going to be like, let's look at the records for discipline, right? And bring it to Hook. So Hook can be like, all right, has something okay. happened here? You know, is is there like excessive discipline provided to specific people, right? Is there any physical records? Mm -hmm. Crafty Man doesn't feel um, sufficiently qualified to go through that stuff, but he thinks he's good enough to get it so that somebody else can look through it. And then uh, the third thing is he wants to determine if there are any really good hiding places in the university. Like where's the best place to hide if a bunch of ghosts are roaming through the campus or something like that? Because he doesn't want to be caught with his pants down when, you know, a bunch of devils run amok. Sure. All right. Um, okay. So it sounds like just a lot of... Lay the land where stuff is. Like, you're describing things that are survey, but I think trying not to get caught doing them mm -hmm. is maybe your more active like thing that you're doing. So I'm cool with Prowl here. All right, cool. Thanks. Um, and then, like, what specific question are you trying to... I know you, you kind of just described all that. If you can yeah. put it into, like, one good question. I'm happy to. I'll choose one of the six to make it simple, or one of the seven to make it simple. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, how can I find X, I think, right? How can I find exit routes? How can yeah. I find um, records? And then how can I find safe spaces? Okay. Cool. Let me roll that brow. Alrighty. That's a five. That's fine with me. Um, so I think you pretty patently come up empty on like trying to get in and find records of things that are going on. Okay. Um, but you do notice that there are a group of professors mm. um that meet up at night mm. um and um you spy in on um just a few moments of one of these meetings and they have a few students that they've invited to like a late night dinner and study oh. session hmm Okay. Um, and uh, you catch the glimpse of one uh, young woman, um, a student, um, cracking open a book, and uh, the professor that's sitting next to her reaches over and just like slams it shut on her fingers. Whoa! No, not right now. You're not the one to read it. And then someone starts walking towards the door and you have to vamoose. Okay. Can I, is there enough time for the crafty man to do his best to try and remember her face? Um, she is actively facing away from you. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I misunderstood. Sorry. Cool. Do I, do I recognize anything about the book? Do I need to like, um, big leather bound tome looks okay. like every other one in this oh, entire school. The ones, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Some kind of thing going on. All right. Thank you. He'll definitely discuss that with Hook and Corby. But um, before that, did I find a good place to pee in fright? All right, so y'all put all these. <laughs> Chris, I think Chris missed the question. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I was curious. Yes, you if, find if... somewhere to urinate. Yes, oh, okay, sure. cool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was any question I needed to answer. Sorry. Oh no, no, no. I just meant wrapped up, and I just wanted to. I guess okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> I could have assumed that I could find a safe hiding spot. I just wasn't sure what 
you know, is, is up to us to declare and what needs to be determined by the dice rolls. Good. So, Play it. All right, cool. Thanks a lot. Okay, then um, if it's okay with you, uh, I'd like to have a, a very um, short segment where the crafty man can discuss yep. his findings mm-hmm. with Hook and Corby. Okay. So uh, you see the crafty man um, at one point, maybe at night, you know, he um, brings Hook and Corby aside and goes to some shadowy alcove and he says, I found something. You know, we could do this like over dinner, right? What did you find? God, not yeah, into so, uh, That's good. Great. Thank you, Corby. Meet someone at their level, right? Yes. So, Hook. <laughs> Can you spike. talk for real, though? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Fine. <laughs> okay. So, imagine I'm doing that. Yeah. Um, so, the crafty man leans into Hook and Corby and says, I was spying on some professors who invited in a few specific students. I knew they were up to no good. Well, they had a late night study session. I mean, who studies at night? Night is for frolicking. (laughs) He has a point. (laughs) So, they were reading. One student apparently jumped the gun, got a little hasty, and tried to read from some specific book However, the book didn't look unique to me. Not that I'm experienced enough in these matters to tell. But one professor got incredibly mad at that student, admonished them, and closed the book on their fingers, and told them, and I quote, No, someone else will read it. I think... I, this is what I think. I might be going on a limb here. Corby, correct me if I'm crazy, but there's some shady stuff happening here, and they're trying to summon demons or ghosts. And that's some kind of weird book connected to a ritual. Seems legit, Corby. I was... What did you find, Hook? Did you get anything? I mean, somebody in authority is kind of leading all this, but who it actually is, not sure. With this, some professors, um, late night book club, protecting it or something. I don't know. Actually, um, a little little side thing. Have we located Quentin? Because I'm sure that probably would have been like a primary. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm. And it's very much a who? Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. That that kind of like, sorry, I will say that it is very much in that same reaction that you were getting from other people. Like, oh, who? No, I don't think I know that person. Right. Like, Stare down. Knowing glare. Like. <laughs> <laughs> They know what they did. They're not here anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Why, Corby? Because I did some. I mean, demons leave impressions. Their desires and focuses and goals sort of bleed into the world around them. Mm. But when I checked around for that kind of thing i got nothing like not a i don't know anything i got nothing so my thought is that this might be more widespread than we first thought i mean i was prepared to you know scratch the whole university and call the spirit wardens down here if necessary so uh, the fact that it actually might be like it's clearly doing stuff within the entire university and beyond, but it may hopefully be a small group applying influence on a broad level. Mm. Mm-hmm. But um, you didn't get a a good look at the professor or the student, crafty. I got to look at the professor as they approach the door, not the student though. Huh. You know, we could sneak into the room, hide in the closets. 
that's hmm. possibly a thing. Actually, okay, so the universe kind of kind of brings us to uh engagement role, right? right? Of how how you're f- going to further progress into this. What is going to be here? Are you going to cool. start sneaking around? Are you going to start tricking people? Be more upfront and social about it. Sneak around. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think in in result what we're looking for because at this point I feel like the book is the thing, right? Oh, well, our goal here is to get lead. is definitely to get the get the guy out, right? Right, but or or more. Yeah, actually, that's that's very true. I'm I'm, 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 I'm playing a mage. Right? Hang on, let me let me switch back and play a play a pirate. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's true. We need to. I mean, these are the people who, if have taken, will have Quentin. Mm-hmm. I'm really tempted. Yeah. to uh bamboozle our way into this meeting you want to get accepted as a student i think that might be risky right but, but i mean all this stuff's gonna be risky no sure but what if we rather than try and bamboozle we um hide ourselves in there somehow either through yeah. um s- skulking about or i can hide us magically yeah, let's go. I am not doing anything magically around a bunch of people who are magically inclined. We don't know if they're necessarily magically inclined, but they're they're reading they books and there's scary stuff going on. Yes, they're magically inclined, Corbin. Okay, books are not inherently magic. I understand <laughs> you don't have a lot of familiarity. Don't, don't you go there? <laughs> the things you don't understand can be scary, but not all books are inherently magical. No, but when a book is closed and saying, no, you can't read that. Somebody else is going to read that. We have crossed the line from literary into a cult. Yeah. Or maybe they were suspicious. just next. It was just their next turn. But regardless, I think, <laughs> I think the path that we take is that we put ourselves in that room when they're doing their book club thing. Yeah. With the study group. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think that is un- unfortunately probably mm-hmm. going to have to be the uh, the way about it because, yeah trying to foist ourselves off as part of the group. And if there's more than one possessed involved in this, then they're going to know who the other possessed are, probably. I I think that's going to be hard for us to fake. Yeah. So, yeah. um, Sneaking in, hopefully figuring out their next meeting place because, yeah. But that's that's all part of the engagement role anyways. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Stealth. So yeah, Hell yeah, prowl our way into the room for them for the next meeting, so we can get an eye on what's okay. going on. Because we want to be prowl. in the room where it happens. Yep. All right. So engagement roll. Going with the stealth. Oh yeah. Task unseen. The point of infiltration yeah. being getting in on the next one of these meetings. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, is this operation particularly bold or daring? I mean, we're, we're we're trying to hide ourselves to go in, in that the room. meaning of the room. Yeah, it's kind of daring. We're in enemy territory. We're new into like what is a fairly closed environment. It seems true. to me like it's pretty daring. Uh-huh. Um, is it overly complex or contingent on many factors? Oh yeah, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I think so. We're I mean, we're basically guessing. There's so many variables that it could be. Like, is it one demon? Is it ten demons? Well, because bear in mind, we're we're just talking about the the job, the, the engagement role, right? Right. The we're job's just talking about getting out. Which the the plan here is hide in a room. Yeah, it's that's not particularly complex. Everything else going on yeah. might be, but our our goal right well, now, like, and, and Craig yeah. does have a point. Like the the bigger job factors in okay yeah. I was, so, and, so it's not we have, maybe not right here at this particular question though right okay fair enough okay. yeah um, it isn't just grab something and leave it's right. figure out uh something that's going on and right. then try and potentially and then, okay so uh, it's, basically, it's, and then wing it so, so fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. i'm not gonna take a dice right here 
but okay. I'll probably take one just for general stuff going yeah. on later. Sure. Um, cool. Does the plan's detail expose the vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? We have no idea. Yeah. I mean, I can only say from the perspective of what we're about to do that if their secrets are kept within the room, right, that's the weak point is yep. getting that information right. out. So, okay. Um, is it strong? Is the target strong against this approach or are they have particularly defensive? particular defenses or special preparations we would have uh, no idea <laughs> yeah, I'm, yes. well, I'm guessing that they would be particularly strong because they've been very tight about getting information like letting mm -hmm. information leak yep. yeah. so they must mm -hmm. have a lot of security in place to stop that from yeah. happening it's their vulnerability and they're protecting it by being secure about who goes in and out yep. mm, could be um, can any of your friends or contacts provide aid you've already gotten in oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. through that so yeah. I will give you a dice for that Cool. Again, factoring in kind of the bigger the bigger job. Um, are any enemies or rivals interfering in this operation? Whoop. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any other elements you want to consider? Um, this overall the the academy at large represents a uh, significantly higher tier organization than y'all. Mm, uh, so I'm gonna take yeah. one for that. Okay. Uh, so little little one dice. Roll that die. Who wants it? I did the last one. Ralph? Oh, it's stealth. Roll. Yeah, sure. All right, sounds good. Oh, wait, sorry. Engagement roll. Where is that on my sheet? It's on it's the, on the um, crew, sheet. crew sheet. Oh, it's on the crew sheet, of course. Yeah. Middle on the right. Freaky fingers. Thank you. Middle on the right. If we take down the ink rate, we get to great. get a new Number name. Number of dies. One die. I like the freaky fingers. I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> Four. Yay. Okay. okay. That works. Works for me. So a four puts us into a risky position, if I remember correctly. It sure does. Um, Not controlled. Yeah, so what we you... Find a broom closet in this. It's like a yes. small lecture hall. Um, mm -hmm. There's a little hallway, or there's a little closet. It's got like a spare chair and some, you know, extra chalk and stuff like that. And just random supply closet, really, um, for the room. And um, you're able to have just a little crack to see through, sort of Scooby Doo stacked head sort of style. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and um, you wait for the, it's like the next day, right? And you're like, well, maybe they're probably going to have another meeting or this is, um, and you realize this is a single professor's uh, like main classroom. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, and um, what appear to be the same three um, professors um, meet up and they're chatting about things, just you know, non important things for a while. And then um, a man that I don't know that you would have had any reason to have seen around campus hmm. yet um yeah. walks in and his robes are a little bit nicer a little bit more mm. pristine and black uh and he's got the big sort of goofy doctoral hat on mm. and and everything um you know the the stole and everything mm. um and walks in and uh the The three professors kind of each say something different to greet him, but they're all very much um, like deference. Like, my lord, uh, uh, my lord professor, <laughs> chancellor, um, um, yeah. And um, so, this is uh, with that, uh, greeting you recognize that this would be uh this is almost certainly um dean hugo duvret oh and he goes about um 
checking in on how the operation is going. How many more mines have we brought into our flock? Oh! Like, hand and, over Crafty Man's mouth. Um, <laughs> and this, uh, this all goes uh, for a few minutes, and they, they mention, uh, well, we sent out a new batch last night, and um, it'd be just a matter of days until they're found. Uh, and they go on talking about this for a little bit, and then uh, their meeting is adjourned, and they all leave. And they're, they have left behind um, a few books on the table. And so the risky entrance here that we will uh, have is because um, just by Ralph's sort of uh, <laughs> enthusiasm here is that the crafty <laughs> man steps out of that closet and cracks open that book to take a look. Uh, and Corby, your sort of uh, spider sense mm -hmm. just sort of flares as uh, as Crafty Man looks down into this book and starts reading. What do you do? I want to run forward and slam it. Let's <laughs> just slam it on his fingers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Crafty Man, I don't think waited very long after they left. So mm -hmm. the riskiness here is: can you? stop him from doing that without making too much noise. So mm, I think this okay. is going to be a prowl. Okay. Uh, I'm going to push myself. God, man does not have resolve. He's very <laughs> curious guy. You know, it's funny. Is it, and you make prowl actions. I'm totally down to help you. I definitely can't right now. <laughs> wow. Six, right. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. you clap it shut and you get a finger in there to stop all the pages from like slamming. Cause it's like a big, like, you know, mm -hmm. foot by foot, like tome, right? You get a few fingers in there and, and make it so the pages don't like oh. clap and slam shut onto the table. Um, and just uh, holding on to this book, there's a little bit of like spare energy. It, it's a like a demon tome or something, isn't it? You don't know. <laughs> uh, that's what I expect it is. So um, I'm just Crafty gonna... Man looks a little hurt. <laughs> uh, I. <laughs> I think this is it. Oh. Um, and I want to... Can I detect the presence? Like, is it just an attune roll to... Magical bullshit, I think, all falls Magical under bullshit. To, attune. To figure out... I don't know what's going on with it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to help? Oh. Mm. With my zero uh, dots, just went for it. I well, yeah, I, I, I guess mean, that's true. You, you yeah, can you help him. You got the two helps. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I I do not have to have a tune to help. I have to remind myself that's how right. this works. Uh, but yeah, and very specifically, how am I helping? I went up to the door and I'm keeping a lookout. <laughs> like, oh, so no, so. I, I'm I'm over there. You read the book over there. We'll be fine. Mm, that's good. All right, so I can take another another D. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's right. So, All right. I open the pair Um, I think from uh, like craft from like we've got like a camera kind of over Crafty Man's shoulder mm -hmm. looking, and Corby goes a little bit more pale, oh, which shit. is impressive. Woo. Um, and her eyes get just really big and 
you recognize a familiar, not specifically familiar, but the sort of demonic energy, uh, that sort of wavelength, if you will, mm -hmm. um, of, of energy is present. Um, it is not enough that it, that you would think it is a full artifact, like the sword or something like that. Okay. But certainly a, a bit of power has been inscribed. Um, and as you, uh, take, not reading the book, but as you're sort of flipping through a few pages, you can just even at a glance see that the words kind of twist on the page mm. and rearrange. And um, there is a... Uh, I think you probably visualize it as a sort of spiral. Okay. A... a uh, a sinkhole, a void. Okay. Uh, and the background, uh, or sorry, the um, repercussion of this five is that I am ticking on the clock of Ooh. something that's happening in the background. Okay. Okay. It will not personally affect you, mm -hmm. so it's not really resistible. Okay, okay, okay. You, you keep saying that, Corby. <laughs> what, what are we looking at here? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm having my Doctor Who moment. Like, yes, no, yes, no, can't be. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe, yes. <laughs> um, I've, I've got about a dozen hypotheses. But this is this is the source of the problem. D or the A. I'm Corby I think... would definitely think A. Okay. Yeah, A source of the problem. It may be the source of the problem, but it's definitely contributing, whether it's the source or the only source or what. Um does the book have an understandable title or is it all just sort of mind-rending gibberish it just it's you know history of duskfall part three okay. or whatever like sure. it's super it's generic. a whatever tome yeah exactly um can i tell if if the uh, this effect was applied to this book after the fact or if it how long has the effect been active yes on there the book? is there is a there is a kind of stapled on feeling okay of this energy um can i get a read on the energy of like what the motivation or goal is of the shard no not enough of it not enough of it okay so reading books in here is going to be a bad idea really <laughs> <laughs> you can read everything sounds good no reading to me <sighs> but it looks I love like that. doing it um, but it looks like whatever I just had a flashback to a, a movie Yellowbeard but we won't get into it um, what's a movie Corby <laughs> Craig had a flashback um, mm. who's Craig Corby <laughs> yeah. uh, so there's probably going to be a few of these things around and somebody created it here or oh. well created it recently anyway and brought it here one or the other so I wonder if there's other study groups going. They when said they kid. were sending people out and that they would be discovered. They want them to be discovered. People aren't being discovered. They're going missing, Corby. They said my books are being discovered. Oh, OK. They're sending books out into the world. To spread this, for lack of a better word, contagion. For contagion chronicle. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, hmm. 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 Out of and character. As, oh yeah. Go ahead. As our crew thinks about what to do next, uh, we will cut to our break for the evening. Um, 
YouTube folks, we'll see you later in the week. Twitch folks, we'll be back in just a few minutes. As always, come and uh, hang out with us on Discord. That is uh, yeetinto.space. And if you like our content and want to monetarily support us, you're welcome to check us out on Patreon. That is uh, staylucky.club or patreon.com slash occultistanonymous. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. See you soon, y'all.